Blessed be the mighty king, your hoes of out. Thanking the creator of heaven and earth for life, food, clothing, and shelter, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You may be seated. Thanking the most high God for this day. Holy Shabbat day. Yes. This is like, it's going to sound crazy, but like the dog days of Shabbat. Mm. Long days. <laughs> and, um, you know, we be here for a long time, but we used to it. Yes. I look forward to the Shabbat That's day. That's right. It's a day, it's a blessing. You get a you get blessed on this day. Yes. And I'm appreciative of everything right. that the most high God gives. You know, um, we're gonna go into the book of Joshua, chapter 15. And um, chapter 15 got 63 verses, but don't get scared, because it's a lot of names and maps and um things of that sort. So I'm gonna pop up some maps so that we can see exactly what we're talking about. And um, I don't want y'all to get scared of, you know, 63 verses. We're actually going to get through this really quick. And um, I'm grateful to the Most High God because life sometimes we take for granted. And um, everybody doesn't make it. I've been to a lot of funerals in the last three years. But, you know, that's also the course of life. And when we bury elders, that's the way it's supposed to go. I know sometimes we don't want to let go of our loved ones, but, you know, sometimes they suffering. And we have to learn how to be prepared for that part of life also. And understanding that, you know, life, you know, that's part of life. Of course, it's easier to say it when you're younger than when you get older. You know, sometimes you, you begin to see your mortality, but there's a thing to set your fears are right so that there won't be any troubles when you out of this earth. That's why it's very important to get everything constructed the way that you want it after you leave so that when you're gone, there are no controversies. There are no fights. There are no struggles. That way, these things are established and no one could say, we didn't know or we didn't understand or you understood well what this person wanted. Right. Whatever it might be. She might say, when I die, don't let that so-and-so and so speak at my funeral. <laughs> That's keep listen, people have all types of requests. Whatever you do, you know, don't let so-and-so come to my funeral. <laughs> don't let, you know, when when David was dying, what he told Solomon? Instructions. He gave him instructions, right? Uh -huh. He said, make sure that monkey over there, uh -huh. that he don't go to his grave yeah. in peace. In peace, that's right. Make sure your cousin, huh. um, Joab, make sure he don't go to the grave in peace. That's what he said. He said, show favor to the sons of Barzillai. Barzillai, yeah. So that's every time it's not a, a giddy, giddy place where you forget everything that everyone did to you. Yeah. Be like, I know he gonna try to walk in through those doors. Meku, make sure <laughs> that he or she don't walk through them doors. I got you. <laughs> it was a song that I listened to when I was young and I still listen to in Spanish. The, the, the name of the singer is Hector Lavoe. He said, Si no me quieren en vida, cuando muera no me lloren. Mm. Like, if you didn't like me when I was alive, when I die, don't start crying. <laughs> you know? So, you know, that's, that's life. You know, and when we set our affairs in order, everything will go smoothly. Right. Unfortunately, you, <laughs> you make decisions like that or you, or you say things like that because that's real life. This is what happens. This is what transpires in life. People do you dirty. People do things to you that, hey, when I'm dead, that doesn't mean that is, everything is peace because you didn't treat me accordingly. You didn't even make peace with me in that period of time. One guy cursed David. He told him, get out of here, you son of a servant. And he spat and he threw rocks at him and did all that and David, Man wanted to fall him. David said, no, leave him alone. Mm -hmm. 
Leave him alone. This is when, during the time when um, Absalom ran David up out the city, the city of David. Joab was just going around killing people for no reason because he couldn't stand the sight of him just being a, a regular commoner. Right. So he said, I'm always going to be general. But he spilled, he spilled Abner's blood in a time, time, of, of, peace. In a time of peace. That's right. And David said, that blood won't be on me. That's going to be on you. And David lived with that for the rest of his life. So David said, don't let his gray head go into the grave in peace. And that's a perfect example. The Most High God said in his commandments that if you have to take him off my altar, if somebody committed that which was wrong, say, you take him off my altar mm -hmm. and you kill him. And they didn't... What did Joab do? He ran into the, whole, to the altar and held on to the horns of the altar. He said, and I believe it was Benai. He said, but he's at, the, he's at the altar and he's holding on to the He said, kill him. Kill him right there. He said, get, get rid of him. So you get rid of the evil hook or crook. That's what God said. He said, don't worry. All that stuff could be sanctified. sanctified. You get the waters of purification and boom, they'll be right up and running. Again, so these are the things that we see and we, and we acknowledge in sometimes life we don't, we don't want to get those things together. My, my Ema put everything together. She already has everything planned out, where monies go, where this go, how everything is set out, whose bank account and what, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, what are you giving me this for? She said, you never know. She said, you never know. It's better to be prepared than not. Mm. So she gave me all the, she, and you're going to give that to the one you could trust. You don't give that to a son or a daughter who you know. It's gonna, you give it to the one you could trust. Here go all my passwords. Here go everything. So if in the in event that anything happy, it happens, you have the power of attorney. If I get into this situation and this is how I'm living, I don't want to live like this. You have the power of attorney. You know what to do. Boom. It's easy. So, you know, um, we have to prepare for, we have to be prepared for what's to come. And, and mostly we have to live a, a good life. You know, um, try to do our best to, to stay in, in good health and try to live long. But, man, these diseases is just like sneaking up on us, man, like mm -hmm. left and right. They just coming, you know, like, you know, you, you figure like people will, will just die like of, of old age, but then you, st you, you know, the diseases that you begin to get in this, and this C word, you know, it just keeps creeping up. It just keeps creeping up. It's like left and right. You don't know where it's coming from. Mm. You know, so um, I'm, I give glory to the most high God, and I thank the creator for the life of, um, that the time that he gave um, Don Yekeskwell. Amen. And at the most high Ben Levy, and that the most high God will continue to bless his memory. Also, um, that the most high God be with all those who lost their lives. Nah, uh, my grandmother in law, that the most high God will bless her memory. Amen. Princess Sidera, her daughter, Amen. Deidre, Amen. and um, everyone that has lost a loved one. And also thank God when you. When you're blessed to recover from any kind of illness. That's right. Thank God for that because, you know, that's, that's a blessing. So I talked enough. Let's go to the book of <laughs> Joshua chapter 15. We are in the book of Joshua chapter 15 starting from verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the lot for the tribe of the children of Yehuda, according to their families was unto the border of Edom. Even into the wilderness of Zin, southward at the uttermost part of the south. And their south border was from the uttermost part of the salt sea, from the bay that looked southward. And it went out southward of the ascent of Akrabim, and passed along to Zin, and went up by the south of Kadesh Barnea, and passed along by Hezron, and went up to Adar, and turned about to Karka. And it passed along to Osmon, and went out at the brook of Egypt. And the goings out of the border were at the sea, this shall be your south border. Mm -hmm. And the east border was the salt sea, even unto the end of the Jordan. And the border of the north side was from the Bay of the Sea at the end of the Jordan. And the border went up to Beit Hogla and passed along by the north of Beit Araba. Mm -hmm. And the border went up to the stone of Bohan, the son of Reuben. 
and the border went up to their beard from the valley of Akor. And so northward, looking toward Gilgal, that is over against the ascent of Adumim, which is on the south side of the brook. And the border passed along to the waters of Ain Shemesh, and the goings out there were at Ain Rogel. Mm -hmm. And the border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom, and to the side of the Jebusite, southward the same as Jerusalem. And the border went up to the top of the mountain that lieth before the valley of Hinnom westward, which is at the uttermost part of the vale of Rephaim northward. So all them names that you see, they're all right here. <laughs> so we got, as you see, the territory of Judah that's enhanced and is, and is made, um, is zoomed into. We have, on the east side, we have the Dead Sea and also parts of the Jordan River. And then on the other side, we have the um, Mediterranean Sea. So Judah has a vast um, territory. And right in the middle of Yehuda, you have what tribe? Shimon. So Shimon is also one of those tribes, along with Benjamin, that are in the southern part of Israel, right? That also are part of the southern kingdom. It's seldomly mentioned, but Shimon was there. Right. I mean, you wouldn't be in the southern kingdom, and this kingdom is split north and south. And you, Shimon, and you talking about I'm still rocking with the north. Now nah, you're not gonna, that's not gonna happen. So Shimon is also down there. And you see that um, if we go to the next map. Hold up. I just keep doing this. There's only three maps. That one right there. So we see this map right here. We see that to the south of us is um, Moab. You see to the south, to the southeast is Moab, and on the other side of the of the Salt Sea, which is the Dead Sea, is Reuben and Gat. Remember that those are the tribes that wanted to stay on that side. And Moses uh, um, allowed them to stay on that side as long as they came and they fought on the mainland, which is on this side, on the on the left, and make sure that they got rid of all the Canaanites. But that's another story for another day, because that didn't happen. As we will read here, let us go. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. And the border was drawn from the top of the mountain unto the fountain of the waters of Nephtoak, and went out to the cities of Mount Ephron. And the border was drawn to Baalah, the same as Kiriat Yearim. And the border turned, out, turned about from Baalah westward unto Mount Seir, and passed along unto the side of Mount Yearim on the north, the same as Kesalon, and went down to Beit Shemesh and passed along by Timna. So we know Mount Seir is where who dwelt? Edom. Edom. Let's go. And the border went out unto the side of Ekron northward, and the border was drawn to Shikeron, and passed along to Mount Baala, and went out at Yavniel. Mm -hmm. And the goings out of the border were at the sea, and as for the west border, the great sea was the border thereof. On the, on the, on the, on the west border, the great sea, which is the Mediterranean Sea. That's what they call the great sea. Let's go. This is the border of the children of Yehuda, round about according to their families. Mm -hmm. And unto Caleb, the son of Yefune, he gave a portion among the children of Yehuda, according to the commandment of Yehoah to Joshua, even Kiria Arba, which Arba was the father of Anak, the same as Hebron. The same as Hebron. Let's go. And Caleb drove out thence the three sons of Anak, Shishai and Achiman and Talmai, the children of Anak. Mm -hmm. And he went out up, he said God, and he went up thence against the inhabitants of Debir. Now the name of Debir before time was Kiriat Sefer. And Caleb said, He that smiteth Kiriat Sefer and taketh it, to him will I give Aksa, my daughter, to wife. Mm -hmm. And Atniel, the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb, took it, and he gave him Aksa, his daughter, to wife. And it came to pass, when she came unto him, that she persuaded him to ask of her father a field. And she alighted from off her ass, and Caleb said unto her, what wouldest thou? And she said, Give me a blessing, for that thou hast sent me in the southland. Give me therefore springs of water. And he gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. So, as we see here, Caleb. Now, there's some controversy about Caleb. They said that some writers say that Caleb was not an Israelite, hmm. that he was not a Judite. Because when you look at his history, they said he was a Kenosite. This is the argument that he was a Kenosite. Now, if you look back at Abraham, and when the Most High God promised the land to Abraham, 
And the Most High God said that he would drive out all the Canaanite nations. The Kenasites was part of those nations, right? But if we read in the, in the Torah, Kenaz, I forgot the meaning of Kenaz, right? But he was just from a clan of a people that came from Kenaz, mm. from Yehuda. It wasn't that he was of the nation of the Kenasites, mm -hmm. right? It was just a name. Right, but sometimes you it's like the Kohathites or the um the Korahites mm -hmm. or the the um Uzaelites. It's just my clan. Like my children will become the Uzaelites. Mm -hmm. Right? The his children will become the Me the, the, the <laughs> Mekuites. You know, like if you your your clan will be so big that you just be known on your on your own. Right? right? Like Cohen Levy kids is, is no, they're the, the, I guess they're the Levites, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because he's Cohen Levy, mm -hmm. you know, but that's how sometimes you get that Kena site at the end of your name, or you mm. get the, you know, it's, it's just a clan because it's how big your family is, right? So it didn't necessarily mean that Caleb mm -hmm. wasn't a Judite, it just mean that he was. You know, he was from that clan of people that came from Judah. Right. So that's the controversy. The other thing is he told them that whoever goes up against the city, that he will give them his daughter. Today, that will be a problem. You're talking about, I'll give my daughter up to you if you, whatever it might be, you win a battle, you go in, or you do whatever. You do something for me that's of value. Your daughter will be looking at you like, you better, please, Abba, I'm not doing that. But that's the times that we live in. But back then, you could actually be like, you do something, I will give you my daughter. When King Solomon, no, not King Solomon, when King um, Saul mm -hmm. um, was at war with the Philistines, he said, whoever brings back a, 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 thousand, a hundred foreskin of the Philistines, mm -hmm that I will give you my daughter, Mikal, to wife. Mm -hmm. David went in there and got 200 foreskins. Right, right. And he gave him his daughter. And there was no back and forth. Today, a lot of times, we allow our children to go and pursue their own relationships and they don't work out. You know it's not going to work out. When you saw the girl come in or when you see the, the, the guy come in, you said, this is not the person for my child. But you try, we try to placate to them and we say, and we try to say all the nice things and try to say all the right things. And you know that that's not going to work out. You know it. I remember I brought a girl to my mother. Mm -hmm. My mother looked at me. She waited for the girl to leave. And she said, uh-uh, that ain't it. <laughs> that ain't it. That is not it. What you're looking at is not what I'm looking at. Sometimes your parents have the better vision, and then they could save you from a life of misery. Mm. Teacher. You be going through heartaches and pains and child support and all types of stuff. You got some guy that is on a rampage and driving your daughter crazy. Because she didn't look at, she didn't look at the substance, or when I mean the substance, meaning the character that the person had, not the monetary value, because sometimes that's what we get blinded with, or we get blinded by physical appearance and how a person looks, but sometimes that's not the best person for you. Mm. Sometimes you need someone that's compatible for you that will be able to um, take care of you and take care of you both take care of each other going forward. Yeah, so if you could take a city, you surely could take care of my daughter. Mm. And you're under my command. So that makes it even better. Why wouldn't I want someone that's a person of that character, of that kill, to have, to have my daughter? But today, your daughter will run away. <laughs> She'll go <laughs> three states across the country and say, Hell to the no. That's what she would say. But it says, seek ye the ancient path. And when you find it, walk therein. Sometimes we got to go back to that because who are we going to give our sons and daughters to really? 
the, look at the choices outside. I talked to my son. I said, look at, the, look at the choices that you have. That's what you want? What they teach our children, the things that they show our children. Mm -hmm. That's beauty. That's not beauty. If you have to add it on and you have to put it on, come on, be blessed with what God gave you. That's right. The standard of beauty that they're giving us is not, that's not what God created. God created a perfect being when he created you. And you're beautiful just the way you are. That's right. But the standards of beauty that they have for our women is, is have our women killing themselves. Because we're not following that ancient path and we're not following the things that the Most High God already left here on record for us to do. Mm -hmm. You see someone that's good in the congregation, and you look and say, you know, daughter, I think that brother would be good for you. I see his character. He works. He go to school. He's dedicated to God. Mm -hmm. That's what you need. That's, not, that's, what, you, that's what you want. Uh, I don't know. I'll be, well, you know. And then you conform with, you know, Enrique from down the block. Enrique comes and now you cooking shrimps and uh -oh. pork chops for Enrique. Uh oh. Oh, you got Jamal. <laughs> she said, "Where Jamal at?" <laughs> you know, and then um, you know, you 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 settle for. Man, you gotta be careful with sisters' names because. It'd be somebody with that name and you. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like, he talking about me. <laughs> you know, you, I was going to say, what? Tree? Yeah, all right, tree. So, huh. Mm -hmm. Catrice, let's go with Catrice. Catrice. You settle with Catrice. <laughs> Catrice done turn your son out. Got him going to church. Mm. He posting behind Christmas in front of Christmas trees with your grandchildren. Oh, man. Despicable. His name is, his name is Kayim. You know? Or oh, Zadik. Righteous. And he posting in front of a Christmas tree with your, grand, with your four grandchildren and they got matching pajamas. And you knew it when he was taking her that she wasn't the one for him, but you wouldn't say anything. Mm. Well, listen, but at least you told him. And he got little Raquel, you know, Katora, you know what I'm saying? He got Abraham, and he got, and he got Dawi, and they all posted in front of the Christmas tree. Mm. The last name Yehuda, yeah, with their names, the Yehuda family, in right front in front of, of the Christmas That's tree. That's crazy. Yeah, and the stockings and stuff. Because Catrice took control of that. You knew he wasn't mentally tough enough to overcome that. We all know our children. You know the, the ones that's mentally tough enough to say, no, nah, I'm not going for that. Yeah. But this is going to end here. Right. And you know the ones that are not that mentally tough. Let us go. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Yehuda according to their families. Verse 21. And the cities at the uttermost part of the tribe of the children this of Yehuda. This is funny. Jamal, Jamal is online. So that's on you, sis. <laughs> it's a brother by the name of Jamal. He said, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and the cities at the uttermost part of the tribe of the children of Yehuda toward the border of Edom in the south were Kazbiel and Edir and Yagur and Kina and Dim Dimona and Adada and Keresh and Hazor and Itna. Demona, that sounds familiar. That's where our brothers live in the land, in Demona. Let's go. And Zif, and Telem, and Bialot, and Hazor, and Hadata, and Kiriot, and Hezron, the same as Hazor, mm -hmm. Amam, and Shema, and Mola, Loda, Molada, and Hazar Gada, and Heshmon, and Beit Pelet, and Hazar Shu'al, and Be'er Sheba, and Biziotia, and Baazala, and Eim, and Edzem, and El Tolad, and Kesil, and Horma, and Ziklag, and Madmana, and Sanana, and Lebaot, and Shilchim, and Ain, and Rimon, all the cities are 29 with their villages. Mm -hmm. In the lowland, 
Eshtaol, and Zora, and Ashna, and Zanoa, and Ain Ganim, Tapua, and Inam, Yarmut, and Adulam, Soko, and Azika, and Sha'arim, and Aditaim, and Gedera, with Gedotaim, 14 cities with their villages, Zenan, and Hadasha, and Migdal Gad, and Dilan, and Mizpeh, and Yatiel, and Lakish, and Bozkat, and Eglon, and Kabon, and Lakmas, and Kitlish, and Gederot, and Beit Dagon, and Naama, and Makeda, 16 cities with their villages, mm -hmm. Libna, and Eter, and Ashan, and Ifta, and Ashna, and Nezib, and Keila, and Akzib, and Marisha, nine cities with their villages, Ekron with its towns and its villages, from Ekron even unto the sea, all that were by the side of Ashdod with their villages. Ashdod its towns and its villages, Gaza its towns and its villages, unto the brook of Egypt, the great sea being the border thereof. The Gaza Strip, I believe, is where the, the Palestinians live mm -hmm. in the land. So when we talking about the Gaza Strip and Gaza, that's more to the, to the west, right there, to the west side. You see it right on the map. So basically what they did to them is they built a wall on the mainland. They locked them right in, and they got their backs against the sea. And then you wonder why they throw rocks and why they do all that, because they can't do any. They can't move around. They right. literally can't move around. They, they don't have freedom to move around in any other part of the land. So they get blocked in. They got a big wall. In order for them to come into mainland Israel, they have to show all type of proof. If they have a pass to come in, that's frustration. You know, that's frustration. They got their backs literally against the water. They have no way to go except the sea. Let's go. Verse 48. And in the hill country, Shamir and Yatir and Soko, and Dana and Kiryat Sana, the same as their beard, and Anab and Eshtemo and Anin and Goshen and Cholon and Gilo, 11 cities with their villages. Arab and Ruma and Ishan and Yanum and Beit Tapuak and Afeka and Humta and Kiryat Arba, the same as Hebron and Zior, nine cities with their villages, Maon, Carmel and Zif and Utah and Yezriel and Yokdim and Zanoa, Cain and Gibeah and Timna, ten cities with their villages, uh -huh. Halku, Beit Zor and Gedor and Ma'arat and Beit Anot and El Tekon, six cities with their villages. Kiryat Baal, the same as Kiryat Yearim and Rabbah, two cities with their villages mm -hmm. in the wilderness. Beit Araba, Midin, and Sekaka, and Nebshan in the city of Sok, with and and, and, and Gedi, six cities with their villages. Uh -huh. And as for the Jebusites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the children of Yehuda, could not drive them out. But the Jebusites dwelt with the children of Yehuda at Jerusalem until this day. So Jerusalem, before it was called Jerusalem, was called Jebus. Mm. And the children of Israel were not able to drive them out. Mm. They were supposed to get rid of all the Canaanite nations. Am I right or wrong? Mm -hmm. And Moses made the people that were on the other side of the Jordan promise that the only way they could get that land is what? If they drove all of the Canaanites out. Mm -hmm. But obviously, did this not... did. This did not happen, so therefore, we begin to let the religion of the Canaanites creep in to our way of life. Mm -hmm. Because regardless of whether you had them as servants, yeah, they're going to be servants at first, but if you let their ideology remain in the land, guess what? They're going to begin to practice it. You're going to begin to say, it's okay because they're doing it in their own corner, and then it spreads out. So by the time we get into Isaiah and Jeremiah, we begin to see the prevalence of idol worship. And the inception of it was right here because we did not listen to the word of God. Mm. God said, drive them out. I gave you the land. He said that they cup have run over. They cup of what? Sin. It was time for them to go. I've given you the land. But we thought that we knew better than God, and we mm. said, well, we're going to have them as water drawers and, and wood bearers. Right. And they're going to go cut wood and do all that stuff. But yeah, it's all sound fun at first. Right. But then what happens? You begin to do the same thing that I'm taught, that I was just talking about. Right. You begin to mingle with them. That's right. You begin to marry their daughters. Their sons begin to marry your daughters mm -hmm. and love at first sight. And, you know, this servant boy grew up in your house. He's a Jebusite and he's got Jebusite values and 
He's been worshiping Baal Peor secretly because you think that you had control of them and how they worship, and you really didn't. Mm -hmm. And then he marries your daughter, and next thing you know, your daughter is off away, you know, and she's eating um, pig and shrimps and all types of stuff, or, mm -hmm. or your sons is worshiping Baal Peor. This is what happens. Mm -hmm. It happened then, and it happens now. Mm -hmm. So one of the main reasons why we got thrown out of the land, like I said last time, is idol worship for refusing to acknowledge the oneness of the creator mm -hmm. and not allowing the land to observe his sob mm -hmm. Let us go. Chapter 16. Uh -huh. And a lot for the children of Yosef went out from the Jordan at Yeriko, at the waters of Yeriko on the east, going up from Yeriko through the hill country to the wilderness, even to Beit El. And it went out from Beit El Luz and passed along unto the border of the Archites to Atarot. And it went down westward to the border of the Yaphilites, unto the border of Beit Horon, the Nether, even unto the Gezer. And the goings out thereof were at the sea. And the children of Yosef, Manasseh, and Ephraim took their inheritance. And the border of the children of Ephraim, according to their families, was thus. Even the border of their inheritance eastwards was Atrot Adar unto Beit Horon, the upper. And so, a, mm -hmm. so what we see here is the children of Yosef were Ephraim and Manasseh, right? So Ephraim, and Joseph gets a double portion because he got the portion of the firstborn. Right. Um, Reuben was bypassed because of what he did. Obviously, he went on his father's couch. So when we look at Yosef, Yosef is represented by Manasseh and Ephraim, but Manasseh has two portions. He has, that's why you hear the half tribe of Manasseh, right? On the other side of the Jordan. So they're on the other side of Jordan with Gad and, and Reuben. And you said, man, they got such a vast expanse of land and whatever it might be. But a lot of that land was wilderness and desert. So what you might see, the vastness of the land, they might have not had a lot to work with, right? But for whatever it's worth, the um, Menashe has a, 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 a part of the land on the east, and he has a part of the land on the west, right? And Ephraim has the land right below Menashe West. See it there? And that's, they all, they're dwelling close to each other, they're near to each other because they come from the same father. Let's go. And the border went out westward, Meek Metat being on the north, and the border turned about eastward unto Ta'anot, Shiloh, and passed along on the east side of Yanoah, and went out, and it went down from Yanoah to Atarot, and to Naara, and reached unto Yeriko, and went out at the Jordan. From Tapuak, the border went along westward to the brook of Kana, and the goings out thereof were at the sea. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Ephraim, according to their families, together with the seas which were separated for the children of Ephraim, in the midst of the inheritance of the children of Manasseh, all the cities with their villages. Uh -huh. And they drove out the Canaanites that dwelt uh, in Gezer. No, Gizir. no, wrote that. Dro 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 ride, read that again. And they drove out the Canaanites that dwelt read in Gezer. Read that again. Oh, sneaker. <laughs> and they drove not out the Canaanites uh -huh. that dwelt in Gezer. But the Canaanites dwelt in the midst of Ephraim unto this day and became servants to do task work. Yeah, hallelujah. Let's, hallelujah. Let's keep some servants around. We got the upper hand. We're going to keep some servants around. Mm -hmm. But God said, do what? Drive Get rid of them. Kill them all. Because he understands what they're into. You're a, a newly minted nation. These people have been around for decades. Right. For, for, for um, millennia, they've been around. They've been worshiping these gods and bowing down to them. You think you can outwit them? I'm the one who give you that power. Mm -hmm. You see, our, our 